Until you need one or know someone who does, you may not really understand why they call organ sharing the gift of life. Hear from some of those who live to tell their story, coming up on KSAT 12 News at noon. Right now on GMSA, San Antonio police are investigating a pair of shootings from overnight. What we've been able to learn so far, plus. The United Auto Workers Union preparing to go on strike by midnight tonight if they can't reach a new labor agreement with the big three automakers. I'm ABC's Justin Finch with the details from Washington. And outside with live cam, whoa. There's like wet stuff falling from the sky. It's all <laughs> over the streets. What is that? Is that rain? Yeah, that is rain. Yes. Wow. <laughs> I know. How much fun is going to be on the commute to work this morning? Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. Happy Thursday. It is September 14th. And yes, we are very excited about rain and rain chances. Did you get rain on the way to work? So I'm driving to work mm -hmm. and there's this little lever on your steering wheel. You push it up and these little rubber things go flat <laughs> and across. Oh, the wipers that we yeah, haven't like, used wow, in such a long time. Like, those are cool. What is that? Yeah, it's, yeah. A while. It, it's funny how excited we are, first of all, of having temperatures in the mid 90s, yeah. which yeah. most people are going, what? And then having a little bit of rain. Uh, this is not, a, I'm not looking this gift horse in the mouth at all, oh. but I mean, it's not any sort of a drought breaker. It's kind of nuisance on the roads, but yes, it is beautiful to see. Best news is too, though, we have more rain chances. That's good awesome. in the forecast and better rain chances as we go into uh, tomorrow. And you look at uh, I-10 over there, <clears throat> excuse me, by the medical center heading out to the northwest. Yep, roads are damp. Looks like maybe everybody's playing nice and, and slowing down just a bit with some of those uh, damp roads out there. Big cluster of thunderstorms up there just to the south of College Station and around Cedar Park. Did have some heavy rain, still have a uh, flash, or excuse me, a, um, a flood advisory, I beg your pardon, up in northern parts of Gillespie County up for the next half hour till 630 because had some pretty good cells move through there. In and around town, it is looking like a lot of the rain is now starting to come to an end. We still have some of this on the northeast side, up 35. So on your commute coming in and heading out 35, you're still going to run into some of this rain. Same thing with 10. Just a few leftover little sprinkly showers there off to the west. So this will come to an end. Then we see a lull in the action. Then we have more rain chances later on today. 75 right now here in town. 70 Bernie Stage, Bandera, Comfort, Kerrville, and even upper 60s in parts of right around Lost Maples. Got a bunch of humidity out there. Obviously, the moisture in the ground now is adding to that. And it is going to be a warmer day today than what we had the past couple of days. Mold and ragweed are both on the low side. I have a feeling mold's going to be going up when the updated count comes out in about an hour and a half or so. Temperatures are going to hold steady now throughout the rest of the morning and we will see some sunshine mixed in as well. 87 at noon uh, got that 10% chance for a shower in there. Just any leftovers little stragglers here and there. Then once we get into the afternoon hours later in the afternoon, rain chances will start to go up. We will hit a high temperature of 95 degrees by late afternoon dinner time and then tonight and especially late tonight, we'll have a better chance for some rain. The best chance is still going to be tomorrow. We'll talk about that sorted out. Is it going to affect Friday night football? And what about the weekend? All those details coming up. Traffic Authority, Stephen. Rain causing problems? Yep, uh, we are seeing it here at I-10, the upper level there at Gulebeta. Let's get another shot at Transguide. It doesn't appear that we've seen a lot of progress out there. The only thing that has likely changed may just be that traffic still down in one lane, and we're seeing a little bit more of that pick up now that we're in the 6 a.m. hour. Multiple first responders are on the scene of this crash, and it's in a pretty busy spot, guys. This is along I-10 eastbound, so folks that are trying to navigate and maybe get to the downtown area, you may, you may have some delays this early in the morning. Taking a look at our map, we have a reflection of the yellow that's on our screen, which is never a good sign. That means we're seeing it slow down and you can see it right behind me on from the transguide cameras. We'll watch closely and as always hope everyone's doing OK. But now that we've entered a pretty busy hour, we're starting to see other issues pop up. This slowdown has been reported earlier. It was detected between Judson Road and Loop 1604 along I-35 northbound. But keep this in mind, a lot of road work taking place out there along 35 for the NEX project. So that's not expected to wrap anytime soon. But I imagine with some of the rain that we've seen in the wet 
wet roads could make the commute a little bit tricky for folks. Giving you a wide look at our map now, though, a little bit more relief here. We have some quiet roads. Yes, they are damp, but we're not seeing any other issues that are reported. If you are traveling into San Antonio this early in the morning, you are still in the green from Seguin. So take your time, please. 29 minutes at this hour, 33 along 87 northbound if you're heading in from Lavernia, and it's about a 28 minute drive time for our friends down in Floresville. But I want to get it back here again. We do have this scene that's been uh, going on for about 30 minutes or so here along I-10 eastbound at the upper level. We'll watch it closely and let's hope we'll have a better update coming up a little bit later on. David. Thank you, Stephen. You this morning, a man fighting for his life after being shot in the back. It happened on the city's west side. San Antonio police say it happened just before 1030 on Wiseman Boulevard near 1604 in SeaWorld. A man in his 20 shot in his back right below his neck. However, SAPD says the man had latex gloves on and was possibly breaking into vehicles. Witnesses saw a car drive away after the man was shot. Right now, police don't have any information about a suspect, though. Also near this morning, a man was shot multiple times in the chest after a fight with another man. It happened just after 1130 last night on the city's west side. Now, police tell us that a man got into a fight with that other man and was shot multiple times. The man who was shot was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Right now, police do not have a description of that suspect. In your morning headlines, the convicted murderer who escaped a Pennsylvania prison revealing how he avoided capture for two weeks. Authorities say Danilo Cavalcante admitted during a four hour questioning period that law enforcement got very close to him. Officers almost stepped on him three times during the manhunt. He survived on watermelon and by drinking water from a stream. He said on multiple occasions, law enforcement officers almost stepped on him. We were only five or six feet away. Cavalcante told authorities his end game was to carjack someone and get to Canada using a rifle he stole from a homeowner days earlier. However, he was detected by a plane with a thermal imaging camera. Meanwhile, time is running out to avoid a massive strike against the nation's big three car makers. As ABC's Justin Finch reports, over 100,000 auto workers could strike by midnight tonight if they don't get a last minute deal. <laughs> This morning, what could be the calm before an historic simultaneous strike on the big three automakers? If called upon, we will be ready to do whatever it takes. Ford, General Motors, and Stellantis, the manufacturer behind Chrysler and Jeep, all trying to prevent up to 150,000 auto workers from walking off the job effective midnight Thursday. The union outlining plans to strike at individual U.S. auto plants at first, but also saying... An all-out strike is still a possibility. We're keeping all of our options open. United Auto Workers President Sean Fain addressing the rank and file, saying the union is making some headway in talks, but isn't budging on key demands, including a 40% wage increase over the next four years, arguing that's how much the CEOs have gotten since the last contract. The most recent SEC filings show all of the big three CEOs earned more than $20 million last year, with GM CEO Mary Barra topping the list at $29 million, roughly 362 times the average GM workers pay. The UAW also wants pension plans resurrected after they were eliminated for new hires during the financial crisis, retiree health care, and a four-day work week, which Ford CEO Jim Farley calls impractical. We, we can't have a sustainable industry working four days a week. Auto industry analysts warning a strike could hit consumers hard. However it ends will almost assuredly result in yet higher prices for cars. Both sides now watching the clock. Ford, GM, and Stellantis releasing statements saying they're remaining optimistic about talks. Ford and GM noting their latest offers to the UAW include more paid time off and significant wage increases, though just nearly half of the 40% pay hike the union wants. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. And before we go to break, high gas prices are here as drivers get ready for the weekend and they're also up across the country. So people we spoke with here in Bear County say they are not happy about it. Just my budget. You know, it's a shame I have to pay more. I wish that they would uh, go down. Groceries, gas, um, cost of living, just everything in general is just really getting out of hand. 
Yep, it adds up. So how does Bear County compare to the state and national average for gas? Well, AAA reports that as of today, the average price for gas in the county is slightly above the statewide average. But for the U.S., gas is averaging about 385 a gallon. It is now 609 and 75 degrees. And still to come, Amazon is using AI to help people sell their stuff. How it could work for you, that's coming up before 630. And also coming up, a small horse, you see him there, making Aww. a big difference here in South Texas. We're going to show you how he was rescued and is paying it forward with a new purpose. Yes, we hope we could see that story. Uh, the horse is named Gus, and Gus has a lot of personality, David. Yes. <laughs> Looking out there with live cam, we're glad to start in the 70s. And we're glad we're only going to reach the 90s today. And of course, David, we're excited about that rain. It's beautiful out there if you want to really know about it, but slow down. Welcome back. Hey, how about this little guy here? Aww. Meet Gus. He stands three foot tall. He is a miniature horse, but he's making a big difference. And as John Paul Barajas reports, <laughs> nobody wanted Gus at first. However, now he has a home and a purpose helping those with special needs at Hope Reigns of Texas. Good. Whoopsie. That's okay. You Good. may not realize it, Easy but you're watching a young lady make progress one step at a time with a little help from a miniature horse. Yeah, Gus is a friendly little guy. He he has never met a stranger, and that's one amazing thing about him that we love. It really lights up everybody's world when they meet him. Gus is one of the newest team members at Hope Reigns of Texas, providing hippotherapy, meaning physical, occupational, or speech therapy, with the help of a horse. He joined the nonprofit in May of 2022, and he's already becoming a fan favorite. Gus, look, Gus! <laughs> Gus and the other horses at Hope Reigns of Texas work with children and adults who have special needs, as well as wounded warriors. And they're also having to find their balance. So their, their sensory, their neuromotor, their cognitive systems all having to work together while they're on top of this horse. Gus is too small to ride, but he offers therapy in other ways. So for us, I mean, you know, we can, we can pinch that nice and easy, slip it on right there, and easy peasy. Braiding hair, clipping on these little bows, all that's working on their fine motor. And his stature is a strength when easing people into the world of horses. Very unique because his size is lovable. It's just, he, he makes you know it's okay to be little bitty. With all the love Gus gets now, it's hard to imagine that at one point, nobody wanted him. <laughs> Until Kyle Hackley rescued him from a Florida ranch and brought him to stay at Hope Reigns in Bilverde. I looked in those big brown eyes and I knew right then he was extraordinarily special. Now he provides care, calm and companionship for those facing Yay! challenges. I think he likes people more than other horses sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about you. <laughs> John Paul Barajas, ASAP 12 News. How they cute. are amazing animals and they have that sense yes. when it comes to kids. Yeah, Gus is really good with yep. the kids. Well, time now, 616, and it looks like we still have problems, but let's get an update on I-10 and Calibra. Yeah, nothing's really changed over here, guys. We have to keep a very close eye, especially now that we're getting closer to morning rush. I-10 upper level there, eastbound lanes. We have at least three lanes that are still blocked, but it does look like traffic may be moving a little bit better through the area. Uh, first responders were out there following a crash that was reported earlier this morning. They've been out there for almost an hour now. Let's be careful because the roads are wet this morning, so it's not clear whether or not that led to the crash but it's safe to say it didn't help matters out there. So again, multiple first responders on the scene. Let's always hope everyone's doing OK. Now the slowdown there along I-10 eastbound has stayed pretty consistent. We've not seen it go into the red just yet, but I'll watch it closely. So the yellow is a little bit of an improvement that we have out there. But as the morning do commute does get moving, we have new problems that are now on our map. 35 southbound at Nogolitos. I'll talk to our friends at Transguide about this new crash that came in a little bit earlier this morning. I'm not seeing any delays out here either, so that's the good news, but we'll have to find out what the conditions look like. But we know that the conditions up here along I-35 northbound have stayed pretty much the same all morning long. We have that slowdown if you are heading between Judson Road and Loop 1604. That is because of the road work taking place out there. So yeah, we've had a pretty busy start to our morning commute, but uh, the wider look at the map does show things thankfully are still a little quiet, but we're expecting a lot more folks to head out the door and the commute will really ramp up. I do want to get back over here to this shot though at I-10, the upper level at Culebra Road. 
we have again multiple first responders on the scene. But David, you pointed out that you know with the windshield wipers, <laughs> uh, even this morning as I was coming in, it was I, I forgot yeah. I hadn't used those in a while. Yeah, yes. I, I mean I, it's kind of a catch twenty two. You hate to see the wrecks. Yes. The roads are slick because we hadn't had rain in so right. long. But hey, boys, it's nice true. To but see make sure it's working, right? Make sure yeah. your wipers are working yes. before you head out. Be you know, careful. and it's nice ever since Saturday. Some folks in our area have gotten rain in some form or another. You know, not any drop or anything like that, but at least it's nice to see it with those uh, somewhat lower temperatures. And cloud and, cover, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And if we uh, roll the bus, we're going to roll the bus? We're not going to mm. roll the bus. Aww. What? Aww. Bus is going to take its time there. <laughs> How are the kids going to get to school if there's no bus? <laughs> they <Right>. will. <laughs> yes. it'll, it'll happen. Oh, we're going to motion wipers on that. Uh, take a look at this picture, though. We've got... Uh, oh, my goodness. Yeah, somebody's oh. kind of hogging the, the bird bath there. So. <laughs> I love this picture, Yvonne. I know. <laughs> kind of, and the look at his face is like, uh, I'm, not, I'm not in the bird bath, but yeah, great <laughs> picture, Yvonne. Thank you very much for that. All right, here is 410 over there by the airport. And, yep, roads are definitely damp. We're not really seeing any rain out there as of uh, right now. And we've got just a few little leftover showers. Most of this, obviously, is uh, heading up to the, the north and east. And off to the uh, west, yeah, one or two little leftover sprinkles here and there. But again, the majority of the rain is continuing to come to an end. We still have some of these showers just to the uh, south and west of Palo Alto College, right there around Atascosa. That's kind of the leftovers. And then even further off to the west, yeah, one or two little leftover sprinkles, but that's pretty much going to be about it. Further up to the north, we still have this huge cell up there around College Station, but again, all of that continues to work its way off to the east to the, uh, the northeast. Now, as far as temperatures, yesterday, that was it, 93 degrees. That's the coolest we've been since back on the 22nd, I believe it was, 22nd, 21st of August. But we picked up almost an inch of rain out at the airport on that date. So you got to even go back to the, about the first few days of July when we were even lower than that. Now, granted, there was some rain involved in that as well. But yeah, that was just beautiful to see. Still had a couple of triple digits down there to the southwest. We'll still have one or two of them out there. But pretty much in and around the metropolitan area today, it's going to be mid and even a few upper 90s. So this will definitely be the hottest day of the week. Then we're going to start to get into the chance for uh, some rain, better rain chance as we get into tomorrow and especially tomorrow night. Look at that now, 39 degrees up to the north at International Falls. Nothing like that around here as of yet, but we've got these big troughs that are starting to move through. So very fallish pattern up to the north. And that's where with this next trough, it's going to kind of influence our weather a little bit to give everything a push down here to the south. That's why we get the better rain chance coming in here tomorrow night and then into the early morning hours on Saturday with this push out of the north. Sunday, still a leftover shower or two. Then things kind of uh, taper off a little bit going into next week. We get into more of this sort of zonal pattern here, mid 90s, nothing as far as rain. However, another big trough is going to be developing out there to the west, and that one's going to make a dip down to the south a little bit uh, sooner, a little bit before it hits the Great Lakes. So that may have an even better influence on our weather as we go into then next weekend and the final week of July around July, September. <laughs> 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 See what happens when the bus doesn't roll. I just don't ah, even know what it is. So. Yeah. As we go into the last week of September, 92 tomorrow, uh, all the way through the weekend, and then mid 90s next week with more sunshine. So it's nice to see some rain today. More the next uh, few days scattered off and on here and there. Yeah, we're glad it's not July. Oof. Because <laughs> if it was early July, what would be coming this year? No, exactly. I'm sorry about that. So. No, you're all good. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go work on the bus. I'm going to pop the hood. You better fine. find that bus. We're all going to miss it if you don't find it. And then we're going to get stuck. Not a good thing. Yeah. 620, <laughs> 75 degrees. We'll be right back. Detect this. Living with HIV, I learned I could stay undetectable with fewer medicines. That's why I switched to Devado. Devado is a complete HIV treatment for some adults. No other complete HIV pill uses fewer medicines to help keep you undetectable than Devado. Detect this. Most HIV pills contain three or four medicines. Devado is as effective with just two. 
If you have hepatitis B, don't stop Devato without talking to your doctor. Don't take Devato if you're allergic to its ingredients or taking Defetalide. This can cause serious or life-threatening side effects. If you have a rash or allergic reaction symptoms, stop Devato and get medical help right away. Serious or life-threatening lactic acid buildup and liver problems can occur. Tell your doctor if you have kidney or liver problems or if you are pregnant, breastfeeding, or considering pregnancy. Devato may harm an unborn baby. Most common side effects are headache, nausea, diarrhea, trouble sleeping, tiredness, and anxiety. Detect this. I stay undetectable with fewer medicines. Ask your doctor about switching to the bottle. Welcome back at 626. In your morning consumer headlines, Amazon just rolled out new AI tools helping sellers list their products. Amazon says the tools will help write captivating details to simplify the process and save time. And customers will have more complete information. However, there are concerns that AI could create false data. Google out with software updates for Android Auto, which includes cars with Google built in. One update allows drivers to take Zoom or WebEx calls from their vehicle's display. Another makes Prime Video available on Google Play in select models, but only when the car is parked. And Ring has an add-on to help you find a missing pet. It's called the Pet Tag, and it attaches to your furry friend's collar and contains a digital profile. So the tag has a QR code, which includes the owner's name, address, and other helpful information. The feature costs about $10. Not too bad to track Fido. 627 and 75 degrees. And still ahead at 630, the court case over buoys on the Texas-Mexico border is officially just weeks away. What both sides are saying ahead of the showdown next month. And the San Antonio City Council votes on the city's $3.7 billion budget later this morning. Why one item on the list is causing a lot of controversy. He's fighting for his life right now, and I just hope and pray that he'll pull through. This morning on GMSA, a Westside family pleading for your help after police say a driver ran over a paralyzed Army veteran and then did stop to help him. Plus frustration brewing over public safety concerns, the changes that law enforcement in Bear County want to see from the Bear County District Attorney. And outside with live cam, if you are just waking up, yes, that picture is of some rain and some very wet roads, which is going to mean that you're probably going to leave a few minutes early today because there's going to be a few messes out there. <laughs> but it's rain. Woohoo! <laughs> Thanks for joining us. It is six Thursday, six Thursday, six thirty on Thursday. That's, you missed the bus hey, six too. Thursday. I know. <laughs> six Thursday. But we are yes, we are glad to have the rain for sure. Yeah, in, in a lot of areas though where it was raining early this morning, that's already passed on out of here. And in San Antonio, a lot of it has already moved on up. But yeah, we do have the leftover road, leftover roads. Wow, we did <laughs> none of us. Man. Gosh, I said it was July earlier, <laughs> six Thursday, and leftover roads. There's the leftover roads over there. Four ten leftover wet roads, and uh, no uh, no hint of the sunrise yet. The sun's not going to be coming over the horizon yeah, for about another uh, 45 minutes or so. Temperature out there at the airport stands at 75, so we're still five above normal. And that dew point is it's gone up, and it's even higher than what it was yesterday. So it is on the humid side when you step out there, thanks in part to some of the moisture in the ground. Here's what it looks like on radar right now. Huge storm just to the south of College Station. All that working its way off to the east. Had a big one that moved through northern Gillespie County earlier this morning. A little bit of a small hail and dumped a lot of very heavy rain. There was a uh, flood advisory for northern Gillespie County that has now expired. And as you can see in and around San Antonio, pretty much everything has moved on. I got a couple little stragglers there just crossing uh, right along 35 on the southwest side. One or two of them back in Medina County and some leftover sprinkles heading off to the north and east. So this is now going to be sort of the lull, perhaps a leftover sprinkle this morning or even this afternoon, and then we'll start to see more rain developing. 75 in town, 69 Comfort, 78 Casterville, as well as Stinson. And again, with these dew point temperatures up there, yeah, you definitely uh, feel some of that humidity. Mold and ragweed are both on the low side. Update account comes out in roughly an hour. So some morning rain and then mid 90s. So this is going to be hotter than yesterday and some of that humidity left over. Then some more rain 
starting to develop late this afternoon, but especially tonight. Looks like we might have another one of these uh, storm clusters developing and a few scattered storms throughout the day. Tomorrow, more will pop up than late and especially overnight. So this is going to be our best chance for rain. That's going to be tomorrow night. A few uh, showers, a couple of thunderstorms around here over the weekend, low 90s. Then after we after that, Pretty much shut off the faucet. More sunshine, mid 90s next week. Closer look at the weekend in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, what's going on, Stephen? Well, we're seeing a little bit more activity out there, Mike, as we get a look around town. 35 at 37. Looks like a stall vehicle has been reported out there. But a heavy traffic, heavier traffic that is at I 35 at 37 here from this new uh, camera that we have from Transguide. But 1604 at Kitty Hawk, things to be seen to be moving just fine. The thing that we're keeping a very close eye on, of course, have been those damp roads. It's likely they may have led to some of the incidents that we're now seeing on. On some of these cameras. So the first big problem is right here along I-10 eastbound at Gulabita Road. Earlier, we mentioned that at least three of those lanes were blocked, and that was according to TxDOT, but it looks like they may have reopened a few, uh, but I'm still seeing first responders out there, so just be on the lookout. It's on the upper level, so again, I-10 eastbound. If you're heading into the downtown area, be on the lookout. And problems still remain here along I-35 southbound at Nogalitos. I'm not seeing any delay in the southbound lanes where it's been reported, but a little bit of a buildup in the northbound lanes as folks are making their way into the Alamo City. But as we take a drive around town, we do have some slowdowns still reported at I-35 northbound. That's between Judson and Loop 1604. Remember, they have the NEX project in place at this time, and we do know that with some of the damp roads out there, it may have caused some delays with the project, but that's not been confirmed yet. I'll work to get that information for you from our friends over at Transguide. But the wide view of the map does show plenty of relief out there. It's still quiet, but this is the hour or half hour, I should say, where things really start to change. US 90 eastbound already seeing that slowdown out there this early in the morning as people are waking up from Castroville making their way into town. But I want to leave it here with another view, few shots from Transguide. Uh, 1604 again at Kitty Hawk. Traffic's uh, moving along okay in the east and westbound lanes. But I'll watch things closely and I'll have another traffic update for you coming up a little bit later on in the newscast. Steph. Thank you, Stephen. The San Antonio Police Chief is expressing his frustration with the current criminal justice system in Bear County after six officers were injured in the line of duty. Now other law enforcement officers are saying they feel the same way. But our officers are out there at risk every single day dealing with these violent criminals and we need help. I'm not sure exactly what the answer is, but I know this, what we're doing isn't working. Now, District Attorney Joe Gonzalez explained in a recent town hall meeting that cases need to be strong enough to take before a judge or jury that are beyond a reasonable doubt. Converse Police Chief Bobby Lane says law enforcement for across Bear County want to be invited to the table to come up with a plan to move forward. The thing is, is this, is that we know crime is a problem. It's there. Um, there's no hiding it. We see it every day. We're seeing it in the media every single day. There's shootings going on. Uh, people at risk. We need to sit down, I think, and I think at this point, it's time to sit down. The district attorneys, the judges, you know, the police chiefs, the county attorneys, all sitting down at the table and having a conversation about this. Like, what are we going to do to change this? Now, Bear County Judge Peter Sakai said there is a meeting planned in the next few weeks to discuss a possible fix. A bizarre chain of events playing out in day seven of suspended Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton's impeachment trial. The day ended with Ken Paxton's lawyers making a sudden motion for the impeachment articles to be dismissed. The defense team then changing their mind and retracting that motion. The motion would have needed the approval of 16 senators. In other turn of events, Laura Olson, the woman who was allegedly involved in an affair with Paxton, was set to testify but was then deemed unavailable to testify. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, who is presiding over the trial, said lawyers from both sides agreed on Olson's status. Olson's relationship with Paxton is central to the House manager's impeachment case. Her testimony has been highly anticipated as she has never spoken publicly. A family is pleading for help and answers after police say a driver ran over a paralyzed Army veteran and didn't stop to help. How can you just leave a person on the floor and hurt? I mean, I don't know. I don't understand that. I don't. But he's fighting for his life right now, and I just hope and pray that he'll pull through. 75-year-old Robert Juarez is being kept alive by a ventilator. Now, back on September 1st, police say Juarez was on his motorized wheelchair on the sidewalk of Whitewood near Military Drive. And they say a driver was backing up and hit Juarez, tipping him into the street. Police say another driver who was behind the wheel of a white GMC ran over Juarez, dragging him down the street. 
it's sad that there's actual people out there, you know, that can do to some do that to you know somebody. We are told that that driver failed to stop and help. You're asked to call police if you have any information. Happening today, San Antonio City Council members finalizing tweaks to the city budget, like adding more money for animal care services, also adding around the clock coverage for a new mental health team. We'll also make that list, but once again, a proposed fund that could, in part, help pay for trips out of state for women to get legal abortions caused the most controversy. Today, the council will vote whether to include it in the final version of the budget. A lot going on to that new city budget that's $3.7 billion. We've got a full breakdown for you on KSET.com. Just look for this article on our homepage. And looking ahead, a federal appeals court will hear oral arguments about Texas floating border buoys on October 5th. Those buoys were installed as part of Operation Lone Star back in July. Since then, the Department of Justice has sued the state and argues Texas had no authorization to put them there in the first place. Governor Greg Abbott has argued that Texas has the constitutional authority to keep the buoys in the Rio Grande. A record-breaking summer of heat and high temperatures has forced San Antonio nonprofits to look for new solutions to an ongoing problem. We're talking about food insecurity. Groups like Gardopia working to increase the number of healthy and accessible fresh food options like using urban farming to support San Antonio. Right now on KSAT.com, you can read more about what the San Antonio Bank says about identifying issue areas across the city and how they are working to find those solutions. And time now is 640 and 74 degrees for now. Coming up next, a story about perseverance and determination. How one seven-year-old boy is living the best life he can despite his cancer diagnosis. And welcome back. It is 643. A local seven-year-old boy been letting his cancer diagnosis shut down his dreams. Tiffany Wet does tells us Paxton's story of perseverance and determination to live the best life he can. Paxton Idell's mother describes him as a spunky little boy who has been through a lot in his seven years of life. When he was five years old, his parents were told something no parent wants to hear. Your child has cancer. It's completely eye-opening. You don't ever expect it to happen to you. It happens to everybody else. It doesn't happen to you. Paxton was diagnosed with medulloblastoma. A tumor was found on his medulla, blocking fluid and putting pressure on his brain. After emergency brain surgery, 30 rounds of radiation, and seven rounds of chemo, the Idells hoped Paxton was in the clear. But more cancer was found. He has questions at times. Um, one of the more recent ones was, um, does dying hurt? And that was a conversation that we had not even a week ago. The Idells traveled to St. Jude Children's Hospital in Memphis every two weeks for Paxton's treatment. Despite the traveling and the treatment, Paxton is still a kid and likes to do kid things. One of his dreams is to go to Disney World, and his parents hope they can make that happen for him. I just want him to be able to just forget that he's got to do all this. I just want to give him just some piece of just normalcy. Getting Paxton to Disney World will give him and his family the chance to make memories outside of the hospital room adding to Paxton's story. When you're faced with potentially losing your kid, you want other people to know them and just know that like they were here. You can read more about Paxton's story and his dream to go to Disney World on KSAT.com. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. 645, 74 degrees. Let's check back with Stephen about the problems that we had on I-10 at Culebra Road. Better news over here, guys. Uh, looks like that crash has cleared out, but it was lingering around for a little while. But you can see things are moving a lot better there along I-10 eastbound. This is the upper level. Uh, really wasn't causing a huge delay with traffic. We did at one point see three lanes were blocked. Uh, first responders were able to just open up, uh, were able to close uh, off uh, just one lane at one point. But we're now seeing that entirely. It looks like that crash has cleared out. I'm still seeing it reported by tech stop, but that should be disappearing pretty shortly. So we'll remove it from our map. 
but there's still some residual congestion moving through the area. We have seen some of those wet or damp roads out there, so it's likely that may have caused some of the issues we saw. Earlier, there was also another crash reported along 35 southbound near Nogalitos. I mentioned it earlier. We're going to remove that also from the map here in the next few moments because that is also cleared out. So better news reports. Something not so great is a lot of the congestion that we're going to start to see now that we're entering morning rush. You see a lot of it in the usual hot spot, State Highway 151 eastbound. Uh, and of course, US 90 eastbound as folks are waking up and getting the commute rolling. And of course, 35, if you're heading in from Live Oak, expect some delays. But if you are going to be traveling along FM 1535, otherwise known as Northwest Military Highway, just be on the lookout for this curb and sidewalk installation. It's been ongoing for a little while, but we still have two more days to go. That work starts pretty soon, around 7 this morning and should end at 6 in the evening. Alternating, alternating lane closures in both directions from Loop 1604 to Hebner Road is what you can expect out there. But, you know, head over to KSAT.com slash traffic. Full list of all the other closures are on our website. But from what we're seeing here, things are looking a lot better. But, yeah, the commute was definitely uh, off and on with problems. We saw those damp roads out there. And, you know, like we mentioned with the oil and the dirt, uh, it causes a slippery commute for folks. So be safe. All right. That could be a problem um, even until tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll have a chance to dry out later on, uh, late this morning. Obviously, there's more traffic gets on there that dries out the road. Then we have a break in the action. Then more rain, uh, perhaps even overnight, late this afternoon as well. So we're looking at maybe a couple of uh, clusters trying to develop tonight. And then, yeah, tomorrow is going to be the better chance for some rain. First of all, if you ever get a chance to head out to Bracken Cave and to see this, it is one of the most amazing sights you've ever seen. All of those bats coming out of Bracken Cave like that. And they actually form their own weather. They can't, I was told one time, they can't actually take off upwards. And so when they have this, they, they go in a circle like this giant bat tornado and they, they generate enough heat to create an updraft. Wow. And that's what helps them get going as and they, they take off on rain. It. And there's, yeah, really, that'd be nice. Take, do some cloud seeding while you're up there, but a very cool picture. So thank you very much for that. All right, got a lot of clouds, but there's the little hint of the glow of the uh, morning sunrise out there. The rain continues to work its way on uh, off to the east, and that's going to continue to be the situation as we, uh, well, this is not going to move for me right here, but as you can see, we do have a few more of these uh, little showers down there right around Divine. I'm trying to put these into uh, in motion. It's not going to work for me. That's okay. Okay, but we have just a, basically most of the rain moving on out of here, and then we will continue to see um, things kind of clear out a little bit as we go in through the middle portion of the day. So leftover sprinkle or two this morning, and then we are going to get up into the upper 70s all the way through the mid to upper 80s then at noon, 87 degrees, and we'll top off at 95 later on today with more sun. Kind of partly cloudy skies, we'll call it that. There'll still be a few clouds left over. Then we'll start to see more of these showers and even a few more thunderstorms trying to develop late this afternoon going into tonight. Here's the uh, rapid update computer model, and by dinner time, just after that, another again some clusters of storms developing here in and around the area about a 30 percent chance for some of this rain lost we'll also have to watch out for one of these clusters to develop late tonight work its way down through the area into the wee hours tomorrow morning then we have some scattered showers around the area throughout the day tomorrow and the better chance for rain tomorrow night into Saturday. It is definitely fall. These colder temperatures up there, Great Lakes, obviously the higher elevations, but when you get those big troughs developing up there, that's what tends to have an indirect influence on our weather. And that's why the better chance of rain comes in here tomorrow night as we get sort of a push from the north, a little bit of a nudge, if you will. And then we keep some rain hanging around here over the weekend, low 90s. Then things tend to flatten out a little bit in the atmosphere, the overall flow, which means forget about rain going into next week. Mid 90s, it warm up somewhat, more sunshine. However, by the next weekend, looks like we might start seeing the influence, a little, little bit of an influence from the north again. That would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, it'll be interesting for Friday night football. Yeah, great. Just make sure you have an umbrella and a rain jacket handy. Say that I gotta find my rain gear. Yeah. Yes. Ooh, <laughs> haven't heard that in a long time, have you? Find your rain gear. Just dust it off. Figure out where it is. <laughs> Six fifty-one, seventy-four degrees. Look out there with a live can. Uh, I don't know if there's any rain in this shot, but not the kind of rain that we'll see probably for Friday night football. For now, seventy-four degrees, not too bad. We'll be right back.
Until you need one or know someone who does, you may not really understand why they call organ sharing the gift of life. Hear from some of those who live to tell their story, coming up on KSAT 12 News at noon. Coming up today on GMSA at 9, KSAT Community has teamed up with the San Antonio Food Bank and RBFCU to collect non-perishable food items for Hunger Action Month. Tiffany Wettes will share what some of the most wanted food items are, man, that will have a big impact in our community. So tune in for that much more today on GMSA at 9. All right, the rain may be moving out, but that doesn't mean the traffic's moving. Matter of fact, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. slowing down here, David. Um, you know, we're taking a look here at a few of these shots from Transguide. We'll just it'll take it with that wide shot there, 35 at Burbank. We do have traffic moving through the area, and it looks like it's slowing down. I've not seen any other issues reported out there near Burbank, but I'm starting to see other issues pop up near 35 and 37, uh, where we do have a stalled vehicle reported, and it looks like this just came in from Texas, 35 northbound at Nogalitos. Earlier, we told you about a crash in the southbound lanes of I-35, not too far from Nogalito, so it looks like another issue may have occurred there. So I'll talk to our friends at Transguide, but the morning commute has definitely been a little off and on. Those wet roads out there really didn't help anything out there, Mike. Yeah, I mean, we had some of that rain. Most of it has moved on out of the area. Still a few uh, leftover damp roads, but obviously as the traffic continues to uh, build up, that's going to help to dry things out. As you can see, everything's moving along very well there at 410 by the airport. Yeah, pretty much nothing is being picked up as of right now. Perhaps a leftover little sprinkle up there um, around San Marcos off to the north and east. So we have the break in the action right now. 74 degrees out there at the airport. 95 high temperature. Rain will start to redevelop late this afternoon. A couple of uh, thunderstorms around and then uh, some of them overnight tomorrow and especially tomorrow night is going to be the best chance of rain. One or two of them over the weekend. All right, we'll dust off our umbrellas yeah. <laughs> for this area. Thank you, Mike. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you back here for KSAT 12 News.